tonight we're doing peaches. Uh, the first one, we have a savory dish of a chipotle peach chicken. Now, chipotle is basically a smoked jalapeno, and then it's in, um, with an adobe sauce, which is a type of uh, marinade that's tomato-based. A lot of people think, okay, well, chipotle, it's going to be hot. This recipe actually is very mild, and it um, almost has a sweet flavor too, especially when you add the peaches in with this. Now this, the chicken, you know, of course we're gonna be skillet frying this tonight, but you can bake this off, you can grill it off on open grill, as well as do it on a stove top. Okay, the second one is a peach and avocado salad. Here's another one. The peaches and avocado that we'll be doing tonight will be uh, used fresh, but you can actually grill those off if you want to and let them cool down, and it'll give it you know, more of a sweeter flavor, but also a light smoky flavor too if you're doing it on an outdoor grill, and that makes a really good salad. And the last one, this is actually one of my favorite desserts. It's quick and easy to put together, and it's full of flavor, but it's extremely light for uh, a dessert. Uh, especially, if this is a good one for uh, summertime, and that's a grilled angel food cake with uh, its peaches and raspberries that we'll be serving on top of it, and I'll be using vanilla bean ice cream to go with this tonight. But you can actually use uh, peach ice cream, you can use um, a raspberry sorbet, or you can use a gelato to go with it. <laughs> but the vanilla bean just happens to be my per personal preference for this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the chicken. Go ahead and make sure everything's cranked up here. All right. Now this one's you know fairly easy for putting together. Uh, the preserves, the peach juice, you can either use peach juice or nectar. I'm using the canned nectar. Actually, I think this has a better flavor uh, using this than you would the peach juice. And then we're going to take a red wine vinegar and adobe sauce, which the adobe sauce, they come in a can. You usually find it in the Mexican uh, food aisle. It has the chipotles mixed in with the adobe sauce. And so you'll be using, you actually want to separate that can. Half of the can is going to be going in for making a glaze that's going to go over the chicken. And the other half is going to be going in for making almost like a salsa that's going to go over top of the chicken by the time it's done. And if you want to make this um, a little bit hotter, if you're somebody who loves spicy food, actually take a little bit of um, jalapenos, just fresh jalapenos, or uh, red peppers or uh, Anaheim peppers and dice them up and put it in with the salsa part. If you don't like heat at all, you can actually omit that second part of the can in the salsa and just use the peaches with uh, the glaze that we're gonna be making. Okay, get a small bow here. Actually, I'm gonna get two bows. Because what we're going to be doing, let me move that out of the way. When we make this, we're going to take about a fourth of it and sit in a separate pan. And the reason we're doing that, we're going to use this one for brushing onto the chicken. And you want to keep that separate because you don't want to use anything that's touching raw chicken with uh, the rest of the relish that's going to go on top of it. Okay. Oops. Go ahead and let's take our peach preserves here. Take about a half a can of the adobe and chipotle mix there. about a quarter cup of that, of the nectar. Got about a tablespoon and a half there of the red wine vinegar. And 
and then the olive oil. Now the salt and pepper, I'm using kosher salt for this. And coarsely ground pepper. Okay. Go ahead and mix that up real good. Like I say, go ahead and split that just a little bit. Let's put that off the side, let it set for a second. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just butterfly the chicken breast here. Kind of pound that thick part out a little bit, help it cook a little bit more even. And of course, you can use a meat tenderizer if you don't want to use your hand like I do. So. <laughs> I'm a little accustomed to it. So. <laughs> Okay. You do not need to put any oil in the pan or anything because with the oil in this that you're basing it, it should be enough. Okay. Change gloves here right quick. So we'll be cooking this approximately six to seven minutes on each side. Uh, you want to get it up to an internal temperature of 165, which is a minimum uh, for chicken. Now if you're cooking on an open grill, it typically takes a little bit longer uh, for it to cook on an open grill. So you're looking at least uh, about ten, uh, eight to 10 minutes on each side, depending on how hot you have your grill, which you know, a lot of the open grills will have the little thermometers built into it. So you can tell how uh, hot you have it on the inside. So just kind of keep an eye on that and keeping uh, you know, a, a food thermometer handy. It always works really well, especially with um, you're dealing with poultry or uh, chopped beef or like hamburgers and along such. So that way you want to make sure that they're cooked up to the proper temperature. Which by the way, we are keeping uh, a sheet over here that has all the internal minimum temperatures for the various meats. Um, we'll start keeping those uh, handy out here in case y'all want to take one of those. Okay, while that's cooking, get rid of that. Okay, I'm gonna take the peaches. Now you can actually cut the skin off if you want to with this one, but with peaches you can actually leave it on too if you wanted to. Now with these, they're good and ripe so it's good and soft so it'll be easy to uh, de-seed these. And all you gotta do for that, let me get this tip cut off first. Just run a knife around, pull that out. Now I always take a spoon and just kind of pull that out in the center just a little bit. There's not much there. You can actually eat that if you wanted to. Texture wise though, you can tell a big difference. And so I always go ahead and just scrape the inside of that out some. Like so. Go ahead and cut one more here. And I've got a yellow and a white peach for these. I've been mixing the peaches. Uh, right now, the peaches we had, they are full of flavor. And they're just at that right stage of ripeness. 
they're not turning brown or anything on you but they're soft enough and juicy so i love these things right now and every time i walk by there it's like i can smell them i mean the aroma is just amazing okay Now, the white one's a little bit harder to get the seed off. So what you do is go ahead and cut the lines down through there, going around it. And then go around like so. This is one of the reasons I'm using the, the white. Because then all you have to do is cut it like so. And you got it cut to the right size that you need. And with the yellow, this is what we call a large dice. So you're looking for actually between a medium and a large dice cut between a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Because when you grill this off, you want to make sure, you, you know, if you have it too small, it's just going to turn to mush. So keep it large enough where you can actually saute it a little bit and uh, draw the sugar out and get the flavor. Okay. Go ahead and put a little bit more sauce on it. Because we will be flipping this over one more time. Now the next time I flip it, I'm not going to put any this sauce on it. Because this is touched raw chicken. But see, when I'm flipping this one over, it's going to be cooking again. It's okay to do it that way. But when I flip it over, you don't want to use something that's touched raw chicken. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to mince up an onion. Now I'm using red onion for this. I think it just has a better flavor and it really goes with these peaches really well. It's, you know, a light sweetness to it, but not quite as much as you would with a Vidalia. But at the same time, you got that, you know, just a little bit of that uh, bitterness of a regular onion. Now I'm only doing a half a recipe on this one so I'm going to use half of this. Now I'm not going to cut all the way through like you would be cutting the edge like that. I'm just going to cut about three quarters away. And the reason I did that because as a you got it it's still holding together as one piece. You can sit there and cut that and it'll fall apart into small pieces without this falling apart on you, so you can still hold it while you're cutting it. And then that last section, just cut it up real small there. Okay. Uh, I always got to watch this stove because it's got a bad habit of wanting to kind of scorch on me. <laughs> it's like it's slow to heat up, but once it does heat up, it, it gets really hot. <laughs> so that's also one thing you want to consider, you know, what, how you're cooking it. Because with that glaze on it, it's caramelizing it. It will burn it really quick if you're not careful. And that's also one of the reasons why I pound the chicken out. Because if you didn't pound it out, it would take longer for it to cook. It would burn the outside even more, and you'll have part of the chicken that's really tough and uh, fiber that's uh, really tough on it and um, stringy. While the inside, once you get it cooked up, it'd be you got to be careful, make sure it's not undercooked. And doing that, <laughs> okay. I want to take some fresh cilantro. basically want to just uh, coarsely cut this S 
small enough to where you know you don't have a large leaf sitting on the chicken obviously but big enough where you can still have the flavor sticking out and you can because uh, you're going to mix this all together okay I couldn't hear you. Yeah, they they are seasonal, but yeah, we've had those. And, uh, so it's a matter of just asking the produce uh, manager uh, exactly when they'll be getting them in, and uh, he'll let you know. But they are really good, and they got a nice sweet flavor, and they're really firm. They're a little bit more firm than with the the yellow peaches. Did you know how you can grab a peach? Sometimes your hand will squeeze into it if you're not careful. With these, a little bit firmer. That's why it's harder to cut uh, around the seed on it. But they, um, you know, they're both, you know, really sweet uh, flavor. I love either one of them. Okay. All right. I had there. There it is. Okay. This should be about ready. Yeah, getting close. Now we're going to use the same pan uh, for sautéing all of this in. Now this one, I am going to add a little bit more salt to it. It, um, this is not a very bold flavor, uh, the chicken itself. A lot of times it's accompanied uh, with uh, rice or um, risotto. It actually goes really good with it. <laughs> And uh, that you can take it either by itself without the salsa that we're going to put on it. And it's got a nice flavor by, um, that way. But I prefer with the salsa with it on top of it and let it sit and uh, let the juices really soak into the chicken uh, before you serve it because it draws in so much more flavor. Because this is going to have a nice sugar glaze over top of it. We make the salsa, even though we're going to cook it down just a little bit, it's going to give, you know, uh, the chunky, fresh aspects. Uh, it's going to uh, contrast with that. But it's uh, not quite as sweet as with the glaze, because where you're cooking it with the onions, because that draws some of that away. Okay. All right. Now, like I said, if you like hot food, this is where you, you know, can put more of this in or put jalapenos in. I'm not going to use that much of this into this, but just enough for the flavor. I'm using three of the chipotes. And just cut that up. And if you're real adventurous, you know, put in some habanero. That would really... <laughs> now, I actually like that, but that kind of scares people as soon as I mention that word. It's like, well, okay, I'll <laughs> avoid putting that in this time. Because <laughs> that really kicks it up a notch or two. <laughs> okay. Yep. Actually, if you just want a little bit omit this stage altogether because where we put some into the sauce it's going to, uh, we're going to be cooking uh, the onions and stuff down with it still has some of the adobe and chipotle in it so that will be enough for just a little bit of the flavor so you can actually omit this part if you wanted to okay now I'm going to go ahead and pour this glaze in there. Go around and where all of that is already caramelized in the pan, go ahead and scrape that up and let it go into the sauce. And I've got it on a medium. I'm going to go ahead and pit it up on a medium high. Just throw everything in there. Mm 
Okay. Now one thing, anytime you're working with hot, uh, hot peppers, even if they're mild ones, you want to wear gloves. Because the one thing I see so many people do, they'll work with peppers, and next thing you know, their eye itches. <laughs> so they scratch their eye, and their eye starts burning. It's like... <laughs> so even if you don't have any gloves, just get you like a sandwich baggie, and use that to put around your hand uh, to handle it. You'll find that could save you a lot of trouble. <laughs> okay. You only want to saute this for about uh, two or three minutes. Okay. Yeah, now this does have, you know, it's very colorful. And it's uh, just as vibrant as the colors are, the flavors, once you uh, mix them all together with the chicken, uh, it really helps to make it stand out. Okay. I'm going to flip that over. Now you can actually make this sauce ahead of time if you wanted to and then refrigerate it and it'll be good up to three days and then all you have to do is heat it up. If you wanted to, you could even heat it up in the microwave uh, to pit over chicken, if you're, especially if you're baking it or uh, skillet frying it. But I actually recommend if you have an open grill, cooking this on an open grill in a cast iron skillet gives it a really good rich flavor and uh, just a light smokiness to it. Uh, it's wonderful. Okay. All you got to do about two to three ounces of it on top of the chicken. Like I said, you can serve it with um, over a bed of rice if you wanted to. It goes really well or just, you know, by itself as it is. And with the side dishes we're going to have tonight, actually all three of these recipes go really good with one another, as you'll find out here in a second. But that's a quick, simple recipe to throw together uh, on an easy to a difficult scale. It's about a medium, but it has such a wonderful presentation. And when you taste the flavor, you know, people are going to be wondering, so did she make that in the kitchen? So, 